My name is Wyatt. I was born near Oswego, Kansas. The town has less than 2,000 people, and everyone knows everyone. It's a good way of life, but I admit it has flaws. People don't get out much, and there's nothing to do around Oswego. Most people work in small businesses or farms. My family fell into the latter. We've been growing corn for the past two generations. My grandfather bought the land after returning from the Korean War. When he bought the farm, he wanted to create a loving home for his wife and four children. Grandpa built up his farm into a respectable enterprise and achieved what he set out to do. When my dad, Bruce, and his brothers became older, they changed things drastically. They wanted to grow the farm beyond its boundaries. With a lot of hard work and dedication, they nearly tripled the acreage under cultivation, and our family name is known across Kansas for our corn. But despite having so much wealth and resources, my dad didn't look beyond his hometown. He met my mom, Ruth, at a fair the next county over. That's as far as my dad has been in terms of travel, but I'm not knocking what he and his brothers have done. As I said, our corn is famous now. If you're ever in Oswego, visit Schmoker Park. It has a farmer's market where you'll find the best corn ever. Guess who grew that corn? That's right, yours truly. I'm proud of what my family has done. I really am. But it wasn't the life for me. That's been my biggest struggle growing up. I took to the internet much earlier than other kids. In fact, my household was one of the first with a dial-up connection. I ate up articles and videos from resources across the internet. I read about different countries and big cities in the United States. Traveling the world while sitting in my living room made me realize something. I wanted to explore the world, meet new people, and leave the farming business. Unfortunately for little old Wyatt, his parents weren't on board with his big ideas. My parents considered my fascination with travel as just a phase. My obsession with seeing the world grew, and along with it, my parents' disapproval. During high school, I had the idea of working on a travel blog. It would cover the heart of rural America while focusing on attractions off the beaten path. I didn't want to make a list of things. My goal was to bring out the stories of our country, the real people in history. To make this a reality, I began to work over the summer. I saved up for my first backpacking trip. My parents made life really tough for me, though. I was going out of town during the harvest season, and my dad had been getting on my case about learning to be a real farmer, whatever that meant. I didn't want to leave my parents on a sour note, but their insistence on putting me down was just too much. My parents still thought that I wouldn't follow through with the trip. Everything finally came to a head one morning. Son, I need you to go down to the bank. We've got to speak to that gosh darn insurance agent about the new John Deere we picked up. Dad, I told you that I can't. I have to pack for my trip. I'm going to leave tomorrow night. You're really serious about that? Wyatt, you want to leave in the middle of the season? Boy, you're getting old enough. This traveler thing isn't going to put food on the table. Honey, listen to your father. Everyone knows you here. We've worked so hard for this town. Outside, it's just going to be a struggle. But mom, I want that struggle. I want to see what's outside of this farm. This farm was good enough for me and my father. If it's not enough for you, fine. I won't ask anymore. Besides, your cousins are better at this than you are. Dad was right. Everyone else in the family was born a farmer. I was the only person who wanted to do something different. I left for the trip, and it was just as fun as I wanted it to be. I explored different communities and took interviews with local legends. I ate a lot of diverse food and attended small town events. And all this? I wrote about it all and posted it on my blog and MySpace. I don't know if why all are familiar with that, but it was the top dog for social media back in the day. After I returned from my travels across the Midwest, I hit a roadblock. Even though my blog had gained traction, the way ahead was unclear. How exactly could I turn this into a career? I got a reality check. Becoming a travel writer wasn't easy for someone like me. I didn't have a college degree or any contacts in the industry who were willing to give me a shot. Most agencies and magazines I wanted to work for at offices on the East Coast. But I kept at it. I kept applying and writing on my blog. And just when I needed it, I got a break. I suddenly got an email from a person named Terrence. I didn't know it then, but he would become one of my closest friends and mentors. Terrence was a writer for one of the most reputed travel magazines in the United States. He had seen my work and wanted to set up a call with me for a potential freelance project. Hey Wyatt, I just wanted to say that I loved your series on the mysteries of the Midwest. It's a really unique take on Americana. Thank you, sir. 
I just spoke from my heart, and people seemed to like it. Ah, well, don't be modest. I think you could write well about any corner of the world. I want to see if that's true. I'm going out on a limb here, but I'd like you to accompany me to Guatemala this summer. We're doing a feature on local music bands, and I would like you to submit a freelance pitch to my department head. If all goes well, you could become a staff writer. That would be amazing. I would love to do that, Terrence. There's just one problem. I'm not sure if I could afford it. My parents are dead set against this career, and I'm not sure they give me money to go outside the country. HM, I thought as much. It's okay, Wyatt. I'm going as a staff writer, so they're paying for me. How about I pay for you? Consider it a loan. Really? Thank you so much. I won't let you down. I know you won't. I'll call you and set up the rest of the details, okay? Tell your parents you're going to Guatemala. I look back on that call as life-changing. I still can't believe Terrence took a chance on a stranger like that. I'll be forever grateful to him. I told mom and dad what had happened, and they fought me about my decision. They fought me hard. At one point, I think mom even insinuated that Terrence was a serial killer. They didn't stop me, though. I went to meet Terrence in New York. He and his wife were super welcoming, and I learned more about the work of travel writing through his guidance. Terrence was happy to answer any question I had. After a day at his cozy house in the suburbs, we set out for Guatemala. It was my first time out of the country, and everything was wildly different. I mean, traveling through the Midwest still had some threads of familiarity. People spoke the same language and had similar beliefs. But, in another country, all that changes. I chatted with everyone I could and learned as much as I could. For the feature, I helped Terrence with research and interviews for the feature article he was working on, and I began to construct my own piece. We roughed it out on some days and went to all the parts of the country. I also learned about camera work, writing professionally, and assimilating into local cultures. After the trip ended and I returned to Kansas, I kept in touch with Terrence and sent him a draft of my article. He loved it and forwarded it to the editor. I got $6,000 for the whole article, at $2 per word. I used that money to travel to New York and apply for a position in Terrence's department, and I got the job. In one year, my life had changed drastically. 2007 to 2013 changed me for the better. I learned so much, both from my work and my personal life. Being a staff writer allowed me to travel around the globe and visit each continent before I was 25. Living in a big city really helped me broaden my horizons. I shared a loft with three other people, all from different backgrounds. Learning to live with others and exploring the city of New York was great. I made friends who had lives that were so different from mine. Honestly, I don't regret it one bit. Even my parents accepted my passion, although dad is still gruff about it. I've thought about it, and I suppose he still wants me to return to Kansas and work with my cousins, just like he used to work with his brothers on the farm. I also mellowed out and learned to appreciate their way of life. My first two years in New York weren't easy, and I suffered from a lot of homesickness. You don't know how good you have it until it's gone, right? Eventually, I learned to strike a balance between big city life and my small town roots. In 2013, my old boss retired from the business, and Terrence also moved on from the magazine to work on his novel. For the first time in my career, I had a new boss. Things had been pretty stable before then, and this was the seed of a big company shakeup. Reggie was placed as the editor-in-chief of the magazine. He wasn't from a traditional writing background. In fact, he worked in marketing before making the shift. The magazine's owners thought having Reggie on board would be a good idea. An outside perspective was needed since there was a lot of talk about the death of print media, and he was the right guy to move us all to an all-digital platform. However, Reggie didn't have any passion for traveling the world. For him, business came first. Since unearthing unique stories didn't factor into the bottom line, he didn't even care about the work writers were doing. His editing role was more about keeping us in line with content suitable for social media, and he definitely didn't like me. I'm not a tech-averse maniac. I mean, I got my start online. But Reggie just saw my background and made an assumption about me. He thought that I wouldn't be able to adapt and be fast-paced enough to work in a digital magazine. My first meeting with him was annoying, to say the least. So, Wyatt, you've been here for a while. I heard that Terrence got you into the company. Did you write about the Midwest or something? Yes, I mean, not for the magazine, but it was my first travel series. I feel like people tend to ignore that part of the country. I'm a Kansan, and I felt like I had a unique perspective on the way of life there. Ha, uh, probably for good reason. 
I hate to tell you this, Wyatt, but your work isn't speaking to me. I gave a once over to the writing team's portfolios, and yours is SO dot 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 weird. You don't cover major tourist spots. You don't go to nightclubs or speak to local celebrities. Honestly, I can't even figure out how to sell your work to the public. Who wants to read this? I think I know the people who read this magazine. I've got tons of emails from people who tell me how much they like my work. Maybe I'm not doing what everyone else is, but that's working for us. What we talk about, nobody else talks about. Maybe that worked for you guys before, but the owner told me he wants to get ahead of the curve. You've heard of BuzzFeed, right? Do you know how much money they make? I want our brand to be like them, and your content doesn't fit the bill. Learn to follow trends, Wyatt. That's the future. That conversation summarized the changes that happened to my place of work. Reggie threw himself into launching a website, investing our money into social media, and creating a subscription model for the magazine. I mean, these weren't things I was inherently against, but his methods and vision were just tone deaf. Reggie axed half our writing staff and threw hundreds of thousands of dollars into branding and advertising. I would probably have been fired as well, but Terrence put in a good word for me with the higher-ups before he left. The new staff Reggie put together wasn't my type at all. Most of the new crew were barely interested in writing and focused more on creating hooks and headlines. The worst girl it was Olivia, who worked with me. Sure, most employees at the magazine were now driven by impressions and analytics, but Olivia was all that and more. She had a degree in literature from a fancy college in the city, and her experiences with other cultures were sorely lacking. That's not to say Olivia hadn't been around the world. She had, but regardless of which country she visited, she lived the same kind of cookie-cutter life. Olivia's parents were wealthy and invested in the magazine which I'm sure played a part in her employment. Apart from their influence within the office, they spoiled her like crazy. She often traveled to Europe and Asia on her parents' dime. Before joining the writing team, all her globe-trotting had been done in five-star hotels, with English-speaking tour guides who would only take her to the most touristy parts of town. Naturally, we didn't get along. But Olivia and Reggie definitely got along. Even though her articles were basic and bland, she covered up her incompetency by learning to play office politics. After all, Reggie already thought I was a bit of a country bumpkin and she just added fuel to the fire. They were both from the same city and had the same background. Olivia played off of that familiarity to endear herself to our boss. It was evident that she was trying to exclude me. Eventually, I started getting assignments that worked against my writing style. More often than not, I was made to accompany Olivia and co-write pieces with her. People who enjoyed my work felt cheated, and I felt bored out of my wits working as a glorified babysitter. The magazine was making more money even though fewer people were interested in what we were putting out. Now, I'm no businessman, but I'm sure that strategy wasn't going to help us in the long run. We were no longer unique. Over the next five years, things at work got worse and worse. In 2016, the magazine went through a complete overhaul. For as long as I had been there, we had always focused on exploring the hidden corners of the world. That was our USP. But now, Reggie was feeling cocky due to the extra money that was coming in through our website and subscriptions. He wanted to create a brand through our magazine. Unnecessary things were added to the pipeline, such as a YouTube channel and merchandise based on our magazine. All the money we used to spend on travel was now spent on gimmicks. I had reached a fork in the road. A part of me wanted to go solo or seek work elsewhere. Yet there was an emotional connection with the magazine and all the memories I had created there. I wasn't sure of which path to take. Eventually, I decided to reach out to my old mentor, Terrence. We met for a drink on Water Street, and I hashed out all my issues with him. Hey Wyatt, I hope you're doing well. I heard that Reggie is a real piece of work. Most of the people you and I worked with have left or were fired, right? It's a miracle you're still there. You don't know the half of it, Terrence. You're lucky that you left when you did. I hope your novel is going well. Haha, ha, it is, actually. But I'm sure you didn't call me for a drink just for that. Are you feeling all right? I don't know. I really don't know. Like you said, Reggie is a real piece of work. That much is true, but everything else is also changing. Be honest, Terrence. Do you like the article we're writing now? I'll be honest. I've stopped reading the magazine. I... I don't like it anymore. I spoke to the owner about it, you remember, from back in our day? Well, he told me that he's mostly let go of the reins, and the advisory board has all the power now. Yep, there was a rumor about leadership changing. That explains a lot. It's becoming boring now. 
That's what I wanted to ask you about, actually. Do you think it's time for me to move on? Wyatt, I can't make that decision for you. But I know this you are one of the most unique writers I've had the pleasure of meeting. I don't know whether you will continue to work with the magazine, but you should continue to work. Maybe you should go back to your roots. Terence was always a bit cryptic with his advice. I left that bar with a confused feeling in my chest. What did he mean by going back to my roots? After mulling over it for a few weeks, I figured out what I needed to do to separate my identity from the magazine. Work had become boring, but I couldn't bring myself to resign. A part of me wanted to try and get things back on track. However, I needed to write again, just like I used to back when I first left Oswego. So, I revived my old blog where I wrote long pieces about my travels. To go along with my long-form content, I also decided to create a separate social media profile that would cover travel tips and tricks. I began to record and post reels and make short posts. People were really into it and I actually managed to make friends across the world through my page. Initially, I hid this from people at work because I felt like I would be judged. I mean, Olivia and Reggie weren't the only ones who thought I was just a yokel. My gut feeling was right because Olivia somehow managed to stumble across my Instagram page when it started to gain a little bit of traction. Wyatt, is this your page? At Wyatt the World, that's you? Oh, my, God, how did you find out about it? I got bored when we were having that meeting, so I decided to see if all our colleagues had Instagram accounts. I didn't expect yours to be so popular. You're giving people advice on how to stay away from tourist traps and stuff, right? Yeah, a lot of people have told me that it's really helpful. Get out. This stuff? I mean, look at this reel. This is from when we had to go to Brazil for that press trip, right? Yeah, you stayed at the hotel. I decided to go out and explore some local restaurants. Find out where the good food is, why no? That's adorable. I have more followers than you on my account, haha. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little hobby of yours. That very evening as I was heading out from work, I saw Olivia and Reggie yakking it up near the elevator. There's no prize if you guess who they were making fun of me. Hey ye, Wyatt. I heard that you're trying to be an influencer now, huh? What's your shtick? Best kind of tractor to travel on. That's so funny, Reggie. No, I'm just trying something out. Yeah, good luck with that. When did you even get the internet? When you first come to New York? I'd say you're a little late to the game, my friend. I didn't let their taunts get to me. I put the magazine's work on the back burner and accepted the mediocre assignments I was given. I let Olivia take the lead and create the kind of articles she wanted to write. Mostly horrible listicles like top 10 spas across the world. I mean, who's going to hop around the world visiting spas? It was idiotic, and I wasn't the only one who felt that way. Our dwindling reader base got even worse, and people started to complain about the kind of content we were pushing. Eventually, the pandemic struck and travel writing took a big hit. The magazine was on the rocks. However, I had been steadily creating a huge community with my social media presence, and people knew about my work. People began to subscribe to the magazine just to read my older articles on the digital archive. It wasn't a lot, but it definitely helped us during COVID. I had gone back home to Kansas during this time to be close to my family. When I showed mom and dad my social media page, I really didn't expect them to get it, but they did. They found it easier to understand why I loved traveling when I showed them all. The people I spoke to and the lives I touched. Just like before, my thing was always about real people in history, whether that was just a few states away in Iowa or across the ocean in Japan. Obviously, I wasn't able to travel during this time, but my past experiences were enough for me to create content. Eventually, the pandemic wound down and we all went back to work. However, the magazine had downsized even further. Reggie was looking to make another big shakeup. He was likely going to join the board and needed a replacement. A few people were up for the promotion, including me and Olivia. To my surprise, I also got a call from a large travel agency. They wanted me to write for them and use my social media presence to drive traffic to their website. Since they focused purely on creating unique experiences for travelers, they thought my approach was the right fit for them and added the perfect touch of personality to their services. It seemed like an exciting opportunity, so I spoke to Terrence and my parents about it. Everyone knew I was unhappy working in my current job and they pushed me to quit, but I was still hesitant. Some part of me was still hopeful that I could turn things around in my workplace. However, that wasn't the case. Olivia got the promotion and became the new editor-in-chief. I was livid. 
She wasn't even versed in the basics of editing. Reggie might have been bad, but at least he was competent. Olivia wasn't going to do a single thing right, and I just knew it. I went straight to Reggie's new office to give him a piece of my mind. Reggie. Olivia, really? I know her parents are on the board, but this is insane. It's not just that, Wyatt. Listen, she's got connections of her own too, and we need them. The creme de la creme of New York knows Olivia and her family. Besides, she's going to be a good face for the future of the magazine. Really? Her. Reggie, with all due respect, she's the only person whose writing people actively dislike. I have never seen that in close to two decades of writing I have never seen so many emails and feedback dissing one writer. If she can't write well, how is she going to work as an editor? It's not about that anymore. She has a perception. Look, is this about you not getting the job? Listen, Wyatt, just because Terrence got you into the company. It's not just about that. I have a vision to bring us back on track. I know we're not doing well, Reggie. Get your head out of the sand. How many people will read our articles if they can get the same stuff from a hundred other websites? That's enough. Do you want to know the truth? I've never liked you. I only tolerated you. You're just a country bum and you're lucky you even have a job. Stay in your lane and don't tell me how to do my job. Why don't you go back to daddy's farm if you don't like the way I run things here? That was the last straw. After Reggie brought my dad into it, I had enough. I walked out of the office that very same day. I didn't show up to work that whole week, and nobody called after me. After that, I reached out to the contact at the travel agency and went in for an interview. The director of the agency spoke to me personally, and he was a guy I could get along with. He'd been a professional mountaineer until his 50s and then started this agency to show people the beauty of experiencing new things. We had very similar professional values and the agency was receptive to my ideas. After a while, we got to discussing finances and the money was almost three times what I was making working at the magazine. I immediately shook hands on it and decided that I would let Reggie and Olivia stew without me for a while. For the next few weeks, I spoke to the leaders of the travel agency and created a content plan for the future. However, people at my office were finally realizing how important I was. Without me there and Olivia at the helm, articles weren't even reaching the pages. There was a huge backlog of work and the writers were dissatisfied with Olivia. I heard from a few of my acquaintances at work about her shenanigans. Olivia would show up at work, play Candy Crush in her office and barely show her face to anybody. After a month of limbo, I finally got a call from Reggie. He wanted me to come back and was willing to offer me the position of editor. I couldn't help but feel a little smug. I knew I wasn't going to take the job, but I went to the office anyway. Wyatt. My man, I hope you've been doing well. Been trying to reach you. Yeah, I heard you have. I took a sabbatical, sorry, should have let you know. HM? No trouble, no trouble. Listen, I've been thinking about it, and Olivia might not be the right fit for the role. You're the guy for the job, and we need you back. I'm willing to give you a huge pay raise too, but you need to stay, Wyatt. Oh, well, I'm just a country bum. I just had to come back to officially give you my resignation letter. Oh, also wanted to show you this offer letter. I don't think you can match what they're offering me, Reggie. Beyond that, I don't think you'll ever know the real reason why I left. It's not money. It's not money. It's not a promotion. It's principle. After that, things have been going great for me. I love my new job, and I don't have to stay in the city. I moved back to my parents' farm to be close to them, and I still get to travel around the world every month. The guys at work are amazing, and the kinds of clients they take on are interesting people too. I love writing and using my social media platform to help them grow. It feels like I've found my purpose again. Honestly, leaving was the best thing I did. Last I heard, the magazine is being bought out. I don't know what will become of it, but I sure am glad that I didn't stick around to find out. If the people around you don't know what you're worth, leave, find the crowd that's right for you. That's what I ended up doing, and I couldn't be happier. I'm not just Wyatt from Oswego, I'm so much more. If Reggie couldn't see that, then that's his issue. 